you're enjoying the music and there's still more of that still to come later on in the program now i'm pleased to say that david sylvian has joined us on the beat this evening welcome to the program thank you now you've just released a collaboration an album with robert fripp called the first day now i understand that you two go back i mean this isn't just a recent thing can you tell us about um you two when you first met i asked robert to join me on uh a solo project I was working on, Gone to Earth, um, in 1985. And uh, the project went very well, and we enjoyed working with one another. So at that time, we just mentioned to one another that it would be interesting to continue the collaboration at a later date. And it wasn't until 91 rolled around that it seemed like a possibility that we could further the, the, the work together. I, in I understand that you were offered a tour of Japan and um, you literally had something ridiculous, like two weeks to write and rehearse to get everything ready for this tour. Yeah. Tell us about that. I mean, do you normally work like that? I don't, but Robert does. And it was a fascinating experience. It was very intense. A week to write, a week to rehearse, and then you're out on the road. The material is obviously still in a state of flux. It's evolving, you know, as, as the tour went on. Um, and you're demanding a lot of the audience because they're coming to see two reasonably well-known people performing, you know, completely uh, new show, you know, new material. But their response was very good. Some nights the material didn't quite hold together, but, you know, it, we scraped by. And other nights it, it was just wonderful. It was a really uh, most enjoyable live experience I've ever had, I think. I'm not really into live performance, but this drew me out and I'm really looking forward to doing more of the same now. And what is it about performing live that you don't enjoy then? Because Japan never really toured that much, did it, they? It didn't, no. Um, I guess it's the repetition. I always felt that in some way you were cheating the public if you weren't totally there in heart and spirit when you were performing. And it's impossible to be there heart and spirit every night, you know. Um, I've since, since working with Robert, I, I kind of qualified that, that a little bit in that I, I think the music has a power of its own, and despite no matter what state of mind you t tend to be in, the work can still take effect. You really don't know what the audience is taking home with them, you know, at the end of the day. You mentioned, we talked about, you know, writing and recording in two weeks for a tour of Japan. How did you approach this album? Was that kind of approached in a similar way? Well, as far as writing and recording, we had is concerned. the material from the live shows to to select from. We chose the heavier pieces to work on first when we entered into the studio because we were working with the drummer for the first time. We weren't working with the drummer live. It was a very simple setup live. It was a trio, um, and once we had attacked the heavier pieces, we decided to keep the momentum going and and work on and write materials specifically for the album in the studio of a dynamic nature, because some of the pieces in the show were uh, beautifully, uh, like uh, beautiful ballads and, and, and instrumental landscapes, uh, very extended pieces. But we decided to keep on going with the, the more dynamic, aggressive pieces once we were in the studio. It just seemed that the, that, that was the flow the album was taking, and we tried to remain true to that. America, he surely doesn't love him. Itching out of nowhere, lands of traffic, knee deep. A chance to stay the morning up and get some sleep. Heaven based on him. The shot of bourbon boots it up. If we can go back to the album just finally, um, you produced the album. I mean, Robert didn't have any involvement there. I mean, why was that? Why was it down? Why was it left down to you? Is that something that you chose to happen? No, so it, it's something that happened. It, again, because of our, our methods of, of working, because they were different. Um, I enjoyed sitting down and taking time over the production, uh, whereas um, I think Robert would have uh, really preferred to have recorded nearly everything live. I wanted to take more time. I want to incorporate the live aspects, but I wanted to bring in you know, other elements which took more time to produce in the studio. So Robert basically allowed me to do that and, and took a back seat in the production. You live in Minneapolis now. I mean, I'm not really sure if you're aware, but we're enjoying in this country, if you can call it that, an 80s revival already. Japan are a band who are very much associated with the early 80s. Just finally, I mean, how do you look back at that period fondly? 
In some, in some cases, yes, in some instances. Um, it was really a period of, of, of learning for me. Um, it was a case of growing up in public, making a lot of mistakes, a lot of failures, learning from them and, and moving on. Um, but it, there's nothing like being in a band, particularly if you, know, you, you pull your resources at an early age, school friends as we were, and, and, and just go out and give it a try. It's very hard to reproduce uh, that level of excitement and that sense of you know companionship and adventure um, you can never get that back so there were yeah there were some wonderful times <laughs>